Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is a special day. This is my friend Annie. Hi. Say hi, thank you. Um, she is the owner of the Love 41 Simple Tote. And I'm the owner of the Whipping Post, uh, what's it called, the Vintage Tote Bag. And this has been a highly requested video. Uh, and we are here to compare them and tell our own personal stories. How long have you had your bag? I didn't ask you that. Um, maybe close to a year, I think. Almost a year. Okay, and I've had mine for about two maybe two and a half years now. And so we both have our own strong opinions and we're just going to kind of go through them and then you at home can decide which tote works for you. They're different companies, they're different kinds of leather, there's different features, but a lot of times people are coming down, um, they're just coming down to these two totes and they're like, which one's better, Which what should I do? And probably the way you'll decide is what is your lifestyle, what are your needs? Because mine are different than yours. Mm -hmm. And we both love them. And we both love our totes. <laughs> so, love our totes. I feel like an ex is going to totally come out. Alright, so let's just jump in and, um, I don't know, do you want to go first? Because then you can sure. just get it out of the way. Sure. Alright, so here's my tote. And I have it in tobacco and I absolutely love the color. It's very soft and, um, just looks great even with all this any scratches which do happen quite a bit. Did you buy yours new? Um, yes I bought my new mm -hmm. from the website and um, it was actually part of Suzette Steele's but oh, I have yeah. no idea what was wrong with it. It's I oh, really yeah. noticed. There's so to define what Suzette Steele's are, um, Love 41 is the sister company of Saddleback Leather and Suzette is the owner of Love 41 and she has a category on her website called Suzette Steele's and it's maybe a bag that has a little bit of a flaw to it. No flaw to the integrity of the bag. Still a 41-year right. warranty. There was... The but, only thing I could see was there's some print on the inside of the leather. Oh, let me see. Right here. Oh, and then, I don't even know if that will come up on camera. But it's like... And there was another one inside stamp. the bag, too. Yeah, like a uh, printed stamp. So... Um, I wouldn't care about that. I know. I don't, <laughs> I don't mind it. Okay. Um... So anyway, it's a very soft leather. I really love the tobacco and um, it fits a ton. Um, even with a lot in it, the straps are still very comfortable. They are nice and long and um, again, very soft. So I never have a problem with it feeling too heavy. You can block me more if you want. <laughs> and being um, uncomfortable. I And the straps actually stay together very well on my shoulder. Oh, um, why? Do I you know? I think because it's unlined. It mm -hmm. has a little bit more grip on the suede side of it. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so, if you want to see what I carry, this is my bag. Oh, it's coming in really good on camera. You can light. see, I have, since it is larger, I have to put a lot of my stuff in pouches if I want it to be neat. I love pouches. <laughs> um, Otherwise, I do have to clean it out very often because receipts kind of accumulate and <laughs> toys yeah. from my kids and stuff. So I do have to clean it out more often to keep it organized. So I have multiple pouches in here. Do you here. have any advice on where to get pouches or do they just kind of They're just random. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're random pouches I found. I have a large bottle of lotion in here nice. um, for coupons and stuff. A pencil case for pens and all that. You do have a lot of pouches. <laughs> this is for all of my rewards like, cards. And stuff I only like have pouches too. You know, my coin purse, and then my wallet. Ooh, which is actually show that. a saddleback. This is a long tried long full tried wallet. Fold. Yes. In is that chestnut? Yes, chestnut. And you've had that for this. A while. I've probably had for like a year and a half. Or longer. Okay. I think. Can I zoom that in even more? Yes. Look at this beautiful, like if you cover your face with your hands, this sounds weird. Cover your face with your hands. <laughs> so now we'll zoom in on the wallet. Because my um, <laughs> camera always. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the weirdest thing that will happen to me. <laughs> anyway. And that is it. So then that is the empty bag. Um, I would say the only thing maybe, um, since it's unlined, it would be harder maybe to clean out. Oh. And like if something spilled, I actually had a whole pan of artichoke dip fall into a purse. <laughs> Hold on. Is, is there anyone out there that knows what video I spoke about that artichoke dip? <laughs> there there might be forget. one person out there that knows because I've mentioned that story. In I remember video. that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so a whole pan fell into my purse. I threw the whole purse away because it was just a cheap, you know, yeah. 
purse. Target, whatever. Yeah. And um, so if that happened in this purse, I might have to do some scrubbing, but I think, I think it would still come handle. out. I think it would still come out, but you know. Online. That's the only thing because it's online. Do you want to show the bottom and the corners how they're wearing? Yes. So here, I can zoom it in if you want actually. Here's the bottom. I'll block our faces. <laughs> Isn't that so funny about my camera? <laughs> it has to focus on these. It's so beautiful on the bottom. Yeah, it, it has no feet. No feet. There's no um, uh, base. base on it. But it does, this is completely empty right now. And it stands up just fine. <gasps> da, da, da. No, so, no tricks. <laughs> no, no hands. Okay. <laughs> so it stands up fine when it's completely full. It maybe would stand more open like this, um, but I can yeah. usually. Well, I guess we can't see from our perspective, but she's kind of like saying here, here, like this. Oh, it would maybe open, begin. stand up more like that. But a lot of times, even if it's not completely the, to the top, I can kind of push the the two sides together and it'll stay shut. So, um, it does, it stands up well. I never usually, sometimes I might lean it up against something so it doesn't okay. tip over. Yeah. But, for the most part, it will stand up pretty well. Um, you can keep blocking me, because then you're in, <laughs> you're in focus too. Um, so she has a list of, do you want to do that now? I think I went through. She has pros and cons. Um, Isn't she doing great? <laughs> I think she's doing great. I, you know, it's a large bag, but I don't think it looks like a mom bag or a oh, large no. tote or, you know, I mean, it, it's very classy looking still, which is mm -hmm. nice because I have three kids with me all the what time. What are their ages? Uh, seven, ages. six, and four. Oh man. So they're all hanging out in the basement watching a movie. Yes. And so, you know. It looks classy. It doesn't look like I'm just carrying like a large diaper bag or something like that, you Which, know? Which, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not. But if you compare style with function. Yes. It's oh. very functional. We go, when we go out places, um, they usually end up handing me all of their stuff. And I just... What have they been handing you lately? Well, late, lately, I said we were at church and my daughter has a large stuffed animal cat like this big. And she brought it into Bright church. Orange. Yes. And I thought she was going to keep it with her and she did not. She handed it to me to keep and so I shoved it into my purse and you couldn't even see it. <laughs> it was all in here and you wouldn't even know I had a large stuffed animal like in my a little purse. Fur was yeah, a little out. bit of fur <laughs> peeked out, but that was about it. So I, you know, hats, gloves, especially in the wintertime it's great. I can for all their extra stuff. I even put my coat in there one time when we were in the store. It's a down jacket, so it did kind of compress them, but it still fit in there. Um, the only thing I would say for cons. Um, yeah, let's jump into that. There is no inside pocket. It's just one big oh, large pocket. Thank you. So, so just a big bucket. One, it would be nice if there was maybe one you know, interior pocket for like your cell phone. Cause that's one thing my cell phone kind of always gets lost. Where do you put it? I just throw it in. Okay. So, or it's in my, my pants pocket or something. Yeah. So if I want it in my purse, it usually gets lost in there. And so it's a little harder to sure. find, but so there'd be, and keys, keys are the other thing that like get lost. Somebody in online, I don't know if you read that same comment. She's part of the same groups. We all are on Facebook where we talk about leather. I'll leave a link below, but they were saying to clip a lanyard yeah, and then okay. have it like drape in and then like mm -hmm. pull out the keys when you need it. Yeah. But it depends on what kind of car keys you have. Like, mm -hmm. are you one that needs the car key ignition or do you yeah. need the fob or I need, I need the car keys. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's just one thing smaller things like that would get lost and okay. so one small pocket would have been nice but it's not for me it's not a deal breaker I guess I still okay. am fine with it that's a good way to put it yeah um, um why don't you look at your list to see if there's anything more you need to say because I can run over this bag on the specs okay because I think I think that's all I really have. really you memorized it oh my she's better than me I have notes <laughs> Okay, so an overview is Love 41 Simple Tote, and this is the color Tobacco. They come in four colors. Is it now four? I think there's four, yeah. There's Tobacco, Dark Coffee Brown, Chestnut, and I think it's Black. Black or gray, whatever it's. It's like a blackish carbon. Check yeah. out the photos on their website, which will be linked below. Um, and this is full green Chrome XL leather, and the bag I'm showing is vegetable tan, so there's a difference between Chrome XL and vegetable tan, and it's so intricate, and I'm going to leave a link below of somebody else's video, James Crane, or Jim Crane? Sorry if I said your name wrong. Hi, Jim. Um, I will leave his video below. 
the dimensions are 19 wide at the top and then they go to 15 wide so there's kind of like a difference in shape there uh, 13 in height and three and a half in depth remember that number three and a half because it's very different from mine uh, the strap drop is 12 inches have you liked the strap size? Yeah, well, even with a, like a large winter jacket, um, it goes over. Yeah, it nice. goes over the arm fine. It weighs two pounds. See, these are boring things, but some people <laughs> like to know them. Two pounds, uh, forty-one year warranty. That's pretty amazing. Love Forty One's got a forty-one mm -hmm. year warranty, and a hundred percent of Love Forty One's profits go to educating, job training, and feeding the poor in Africa. They have these awesome charities. You can look more into that on their website but very cool that they donate all their profits. 30-day uh, return. And, um, yeah, so La Suzette is the owner of Love 41, and she's the wife of Dave, who is the owner of Saddleback Leather. So a husband and wife company. Uh, yeah. And the logo's right here, if you can't see. Covering our faces. <laughs> Isn't that so funny that we have to do that? Uh, okay, you did a really nice job. Thank you. So maybe we'll pit them against each other once I do a review of my bag. All right. If that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me flip my notes to mine. We're doing really well on time. And here is my vintage tote bag. So even when... I want to compare them like right now, but I don't. But one thing, do you notice... Like, turn yours like I'm turning mine. Like, isn't mine reading more of a sheen than yours? Yeah, like, yours has more of a shine. Yeah, yours is very, more matte. Or glossy, so. kind of. There's at least that difference. Okay, yeah. you can put your stuff in. <laughs> um, so I've had mine for, I think, two and a half years. I bought it, and then I've had so many um, battle scars on this bag. I've never considered selling it. I normally sell my bags if I get sick of them after a while. But this one has never been on the... Um, chopping block, butcher block. But at the end of this video, um, Annie won't be in this part, but I'm going to share stories about what happened to my toe and why there's this huge gash here and why there's this and that. So if you are, uh, you have a long attention span, hang out with me after all of this um, and I'll show you and tell you these stories. It, it's very crazy. Okay, so mine retails for $195. It's 100 percent vegetable tan leather. Again, there's a difference between our leathers. Um, maybe I'll show you first what's inside and then I'll do my specs. But this is pretty full right now. Oh yeah. Oh, having a, a healthy <laughs> hand is so <laughs> nice. <laughs> so this is, I'll start with this like thermos. This is my famous, ther my favorite thermos. It holds I think 24 ounces and it keeps it cold you know like the ice cubes for like two days it's insane <laughs> nice target <laughs> but that's really helpful in there and then you guys have seen these a million times my two file effects the big and the small so those fit just fine I have this is the clutch envelope is that what it's called I think so yeah yeah okay <laughs> from Saddleback Leather and Black and that fits vertically it sticks out a little you can see, and then putting it down. I bet people are going to say, you need to start your own channel, Annie. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one, if it's nice. Well, actually, I've reviewed two of your bags. Two, yeah. And you have three. I have three. <laughs> and the wallet. And the wallet. And then my husband has a briefcase. Yeah, her husband has, what briefcase is it? The thin? It's the thin, um, large, like the large size, I think. Yeah, and he's been using that for like a year now too, right? Mm -hmm. Did he cut off the D-rings? Uh, no. He oh, was considering good. doing that. No, maybe he did. He did. Never mind. He, he did? did? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's his bag. You can do it was D-rings on the bottom that yeah. planked and stuff. He Every time you off. put the bag down. Yeah, he cut those off. <laughs> Sorry, I got her distracted. But, um, so it's almost empty, but the main time I use this bag is if I'm going from one purse to another purse and I don't want to really figure out all my pouches. So this is from Whipping Post. It's called their wash bag. As you can see it's a smaller thing. It's a zipper and then one little pocket lined with nylon. And so I'll take a bag that I was using. Can you hold on that for a sec? So like this is a bag I'm about to review. It's from Floto Imports. It's not coming in. I'm sorry I'm going to cover my face. <laughs> Look at it. Oh is it coming in? It's very <laughs> cute. Like it's I know. It detects our face. 
<laughs> so this is from Floto Imports, and so I'm gonna take everything out of here and put it in the wash bag, and then I put it in my tote. So I'm gonna do that in just a second here. Okay, so I'm gonna take everything out of here. It opens like this. Is it in focus? I hope it is. The purse, I don't think it's not. I know, it's not coming it's through. Blurry. Okay, cover your face again. Sorry guys, you know me. Rough editing. <laughs> so this is from Floto Imports. And I'm gonna be doing a full review on this bag soon. Isn't it charming? I think it's very charming. It has a back zipper. Um, okay, see, one's a dummy, one's not. Pull that in. So I'll have a lot of random things flying around, and I don't want these flying around in my tote. So I'll just put them in the wash bag. Chapstick. This is a pouch. That's the most random thing. It has um, lipstick, scissors. You've seen this a million times, guys, but. Bose headphones. And then recently, for some reason, I went down to this. Oh, there's my credit card. <laughs> I'm going to turn that, that around. <laughs> I don't think they can see it. And there's my license. Okay, <laughs> let's just throw this over there. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Okay, so here's like a little pouch. Um, that I've been using for my credit cards just this week. And now the bag is empty. Say goodbye. <laughs> my earlier videos, I was, I was just chucking things like <laughs> out of frame. Okay, so I will zip this up and now everything that I essentially need is going to be in this one pouch. And then I throw it in here. Uh, along with all those other things, if that makes sense. So, uh, maybe I'll go on to my pros and cons of this bag. It is floppy, it's smooshy, just like Annie's is. But the biggest difference between the Whipping Post Tote and the Love 41 Simple Tote is the base. I have a built-in base in mine. You can kind of see there's like, I can't bend this. There's no give. And it's not affecting my corners. I'm gonna zoom in really quick. Cover your <laughs> This is so bizarre. Um, there you go. So here's like my corners. You'll see there's a little bit of a darkness to them. But that's more of the, just the burnishing of the leather. There's no flaw from the base, like, poking on the corner. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and the other main difference is it comes with one pocket. So the pocket stays flush to the side of the wall. It is attached using the rivets from the handles. So one, two, and then here's the actual copper rivets for the, the handles. So it's a very streamlined pocket. Um, you can actually get behind the pocket. Oh my gosh, look at me. <laughs> there we go. You can get behind it, which some people think is a flaw, but I think it's nice because then I can put pens um, back here. I can put my sunglasses I clip there. Oh, yeah. I put my cell phone in the pocket. Um, yeah, that's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice one huge difference about mine is I have a center closure. Um, with a, uh, I think it's called a nipple rivet right here. So this strap is something I had added on at a leather company, um, in town, and I will talk about that at the end of the video, but I'm not going to talk about that now. Whipping post totes do not come with a center strap. I added my own. I just really want to make sure people are like, where's my strap? Where's my center <laughs> strap? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so pros, I said base and pocket. I like that there's a two-tone color. This is more of in the red family. This has more of a brown strap. I like that orange copper coming through. Um, I love that this wrinkles like crazy. I think I'll zoom in again. <laughs> we didn't zoom in that much on yours, did we? Here, I'll just block your face like this. So you can kind of see this bag being this old. You'll get it day one and it will be so stiff and stand up on its own. And then it gets these like oh, charming wrinkles like crazy. I just love that about leather. I love all the characters that happen. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I think the size is great. I use this bag mainly on days that I'm going to a lot of different um, meetings or stores or I'm traveling. I tend to grab it a lot for road trips. Um, I wouldn't mind grabbing it for an airplane ride because I have the center closure. But sometimes when you get on a plane, they're like, ma'am, can you put that above your head in the overhead compartment? And I'm like, 
if you didn't have that center strap, that kind of makes me wonder if things are going to fall out when mm -hmm. you open it again. But now I don't have to worry about that. So, uh, but consider it for yourself if you're going to get a center strap or not. Um, these little children are so sweet. Hold on, they might not come in. They're a little too persistent. <laughs> okay, hold on, we'll be right back. I thought I heard footsteps. Mm -hmm. And we're back! <laughs> Name that quote. Um, so we're back and we're going to... Uh, I think I was talking about how great the size of this bag was. I normally... I'm just grabbing it when it's just... I have too much to carry. My everyday carry bag is not going to work out. I'm not in the mood for a backpack. I grab the tote. And it's relatively, relatively comfortable to carry for many hours. I mean, maybe I'm just a wimp, but after, if it's so heavy, I'm just like, oh my gosh, and I keep putting it down. But I don't mind putting it down. It has a great base. Um, yeah, and then sometimes I actually use this bag for weeks on end where I don't even have that much to carry. But it's just something that's beautiful to look at. It's so slouchy. It's so yummy. I think I smell it and like hug it. Like, oh my gosh. That's my own problem. And then um, another big plus is that um, Whipping Post, the company, has a huge variety of colors for this bag. And then they also have a variety of styles of their totes. So they have one like where the buckle comes around the sides like this. Oh, that one. Dude. I saw it and I was like, Danae, you do not need another tote. <laughs> but, um, and then some cons. I think the pocket is actually too high. I understand why they chose to put it where they did, but what happens is, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to explain this, it's because the pocket gets full right here, it pushes a lot of weight and it makes it jet down and like stretches the leather um, on the side, so it's kind of always just flopping this way. Uh, not really sure how they could avoid that, I guess just mounting the pocket lower or making the pocket deeper. Uh, another con is that it doesn't have a closure. I know mine does, but yours won't. <laughs> and I don't know why they don't add more closures to it tones. Would, it would be nice. As they have. get fuller, it just becomes this big circle. It's very open. <laughs> and I'll list some companies down below that do have center closures. There's one guy that makes custom totes. Um, his name is K-O-C-H, and I think it's Coke. That's how somebody told yeah. me to say it. That's mm -hmm. how you think? Coke. Uh, Josh Koch, and he makes amazing totes. Hi, Josh. And uh, I'll leave his information down below because he has center straps to his totes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a con that some people think are that the edges are burnishing into this darker color, but I'm not considering that too much of a con, but just be heads up. Like, when it is wearing, like, being really worn in, it's going to have those darker colors show up. I've never conditioned this. It has done, it hasn't needed it, it hasn't dried out yet. It's been in every rainstorm. It is no problem there. No, um, because it's vegetable tan, it's going to get wrinkly and slouchy, but it's not really having any patina. And so I think with that comment, we should compare them now. Because right. hers patina is like crazy, right? Yes. It, and this has been out in the rain, too. Oh, I, good. I've never conditioned it, done anything yeah. to it. So this is... So oh, if you want it. patina, go here. But yours mm -hmm. isn't really wrinkling. No. So Mine it's... wrinkles, but then maybe that's not a huge pro to people. Yes. To me, the wrinkling is like, yeah, it's so <laughs> charming. I, yeah, I love like the colors. I just, I'm always like, I can't <laughs> you. <laughs> yes, my husband makes fun of me for that. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to You're in a safe place like, <laughs> now. You know? We all do that. <laughs> That's really so, cute. The only, um, the straps sometimes, though, I feel like I'm worried that they'll stretch, but I don't think I've seen any. Yeah. So we I looked it over. We didn't see any stretching, I don't think. But on Love41's website, they said because the leather is unlined, it is going to stretch. That's just the mm -hmm. characteristic of leather, plus weight, plus time. Mm -hmm. And so, heads up, if that happened to you, it's not a flaw. It was told to you, heads up, like, yes. before time. Yes. And then my um, straps are vegetable tan. And so they're a little bit thicker, and there's more texture to them, and they haven't, like, stretched at all. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if because it's a little bit a little thicker. thicker. So we're going to zoom in see. again. Okay, you know the drill. Block your face. <laughs> I'll just... Okay, <laughs> there you go. So let me make sure this is zoomed in. But here's the difference in the leather um, of the straps. So the bottom one is Whipping Post, and the top... Excuse me, the bottom is Love 41, the top is Whipping Post. 
And uh, so there's a difference in thickness there. And then uh, let's see if there's a difference in thickness in the general body of the bag. Some people like these zoom-ins. Mm -hmm. Some people just buy totes because they want one and they don't even think about it. And I'm like, not that person. So those are actually relatively close. Um, I think Love 41 has more of like a smooth inside. Mm -hmm. But like my Love 41 has more of a texture, I feel like. Yeah, there's more texture in there. How are your abs? You're just <laughs> great. <laughs> Getting a workout. Okay. Uh, let's. What's another comparison? Um, my depth, by the way, I don't know if I went into. Did I do my specs? Yeah, you did. Okay, thank you for the reminder. So, well, did I? For no, me? you didn't. You showed it. You didn't do the specs for Okay. Me, so. Really quick. It's 15 wide, but mine's very square. There's no like trapezoid about it. 15 wide, um, 13 tall, and then five and a half deep. So you want to do and yours? Nice. See, like mine's three. Or three and a half. Yours is yours is three and a half deep. Mine's five and a half. So a full two inches difference there. Mm -hmm. I find that to be a pro yeah. to mine, <laughs> just because it's like a little deeper. Or I mean, both of ours stand, but everything I put in here kind of finds its spot in the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you open it, and you can just see everybody. That is, um, like when I do have all of my little bags and stuff in here, it does all. It does make it maybe like wider, I would say. Like if it were it five inches or the five and a half, mm -hmm. I think they would all set a little bit better because they, that, yeah, they kind of find their own little home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, mine weighs two and a half pounds. Yours weighs two pounds. Mm -hmm. Pretty similar. Um, thirty day return. Thirty day return. Forty one year warranty. Vintage tote or whipping post tote is warranty. It says. They're in for the long haul, and they are willing to work with you if anything happens with your bag to repair it. So, granted, that's not like a number, but um, the company, Ryan Barr, is really, uh, the backstory, I've heard this once, I couldn't find my source, but I know it to be true, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess, but Ryan Barr is the owner of Whipping Post, and he was actually mentored by Dave Munson, who's the owner of Saddleback Leather, who is the husband of Love For Me Once, oh, is that? Can you follow that? <laughs> yeah? Okay, so I thought it was interesting that those men had a mentorship together and really just spoke about leather integrity integrity, and having just quality materials throughout the whole bag. And um, their leathers are different, but I believe they're assembled in the same factory in Mexico. Why do I think this? I don't even know where I heard it, but I like believe it to be true. <laughs> but that could get me in trouble. Okay, so hi Ryan. <laughs> I've really enjoyed Whipping Post. Since I've ever since I've known of the company, I have a review on their roll top backpack, which actually didn't end up working for me. But I'm considering getting their satchel. This is, this is getting out of hand. Okay, um, now I think since my stuff's done, we can really compare them. All right. But how should we compare them? Because um, they're just different, and they're different leathers, and they're different sizes. Well, one, generally, one thing too is the, uh, the strap length, right? Oh, my strap drop length. No, it's very similar. Mine's eleven and a half. Oh, really? And yours is twelve. <laughs> if you. But it doesn't seem it like. It seems oh, like. Here, oh, wait, maybe we, does that mean your bag is stretched? Now. <laughs> no, maybe. Do you that? think so? Because the specs on the website says twelve inch drop. And mine says 11 and a half. And that looks like a two inch drop, I would say. Wow. So maybe it has stretched a little bit. You hear it here first, folks. <laughs> so, it, but yeah. the longer strap's kind of nice. Or maybe that was why Doesn't it, it was hit uh, you? steel. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> okay, friends at home who have this bag, measure your strap drop and see if it's. Comment so. below. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that was. <laughs> you wouldn't have known that. I know, but it's been a very convenient strap. Yeah, size. I love the strap length. I think it's a great. How should we compare these? Aren't they so different? We should have thought more about the comparisons. I think really you gotta sit at home and think, what is it that's more important to you? Is the patina and color a huge plus? Because it is. But that also change with what color you get too. I have a friend who has the oh. dark coffee brown. And it, I would say it still no wears patina. differently. Yeah, it wears differently. Like hers feels a little stiffer. So the tobacco patinas. Yes, the tobacco patinas very well. 
Mm -hmm. she only she hasn't had it for long, so I don't know. No, they just don't. Yeah, I've seen other old stuff from. Mm -hmm. I mean, dark coffee brown is going to more likely have wrinkles mm -hmm. and more scratches and stuff, but it's not going to get this like marbling patina yeah. beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, it's almost like if this had a pocket, this one had a pocket and a closure and a base. I might have picked that one, yeah. but because this has the base in the pocket, this is why I keep picking this one. Mm -hmm. And then I added a closure. Yeah. <laughs> so to add the closure, if you don't want to wait to the end, it was just, um, I got two copper rivets, a long strap, cut the holes I wanted, and added one hole on the other side for a nipple rivet. It seems extensive, but really if you just have a strap and the holes, you're fine. <laughs> the mm -hmm. copper rivet part I had to go to a leather guide to do. Somebody wanted to compare the simple tote. Well, I guess we have Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> you see the spray? It's like they're all full. <laughs> so this is the mountain back tote from Saddleback Leather. But somebody specifically wanted to see these side by side. Um, and I have the specs for those right here. Um, this one retails for $310. And then yours retails for $169. So that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. A 100 year warranty. The dimensions are 13 um, high, 14 and a half wide by three and a fourth deep and 2.6 pounds. So half a pound heavier too. And a lot more narrow than two for that. Yeah. You compare. Oh, thank you. Good idea. How much bigger. <laughs> yeah. And so look at these straps. I've had this for like six months and they have not like fallen over. The straps are adjustable heights right here and an outside pocket. What's in here? Nothing. And an inside pocket. And on my YouTube, I have an a full review on this bag um, and it has handles so like to me these are super different yeah this is different the pockets are different the adjustability on the the handles and the materials of wax cotton mm -hmm. with a um, bull leather which is a vegetable tan do you see those are, yeah, those are very thick <laughs> those are never no those are not over <laughs> um, and then here's the interior so Somebody online wanted to see the comparison, and I don't know if they really do compare. Uh, they just have a lot of different specs. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful to have both. I mean, this was gifted to me from Saddleback Leather, but all my opinions are my own, and so I've just been using this, again, when I have too much to carry. This handle is so brilliant going in and out of the car. Um, this has actually gone on more trips with me than any of my other totes nice sturdy <laughs> and it's very nice like and and subtle you know it's not going mm -hmm. to be super in your face did you actually know this is the front this side oh, is the really? front and then oh. this is the back but i think this is yeah, the front i'd say that's the front yeah. <laughs> i would do that anyway okay <laughs> so any other thoughts you have i want to be sure that you guys have um do they want to see a oh standing up with it we will try them on i have to readjust the camera for that but in the comments below, write your story. Write what you like, what you don't, what worked, what didn't. Maybe you sold one of these bags because you didn't like it. Because then other people coming to this video can really just look at all everyone's comments. And um, no judgment. I'm not saying one's right or wrong. Mine's right. Um, <laughs> I think mine. <laughs> <laughs> I love mine. Well, see, that's a good thing that we yes. both have used these. Yeah, I wouldn't. For over a year, and we're passionately still in love with them. I would still pick this one. You won? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your main reasons? Like your main three reasons um, over this one? I mean, part of it, I mean, it's the, the leather. That is the, the tobacco. I love the tobacco. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty. I have two other bags in the same tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> so I do love that. And um, I know the the strap length is the other thing, too. I And that they do stay on my shoulder. Um, oh, this one would stay on your shoulder? Yes. That one really, what we should have done before this video is like switch for a month. <laughs> and then we could be like, mm, what I like. Maybe we could still do that and then I'll just comment below. Yeah, this okay. one has um, a finished side and an unfinished side, and the unfinished side sits on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, and it, like, even though it's large, like, I mean, the base on hers is larger too, but it still stays up. And I don't know. I kind of like the thinner too, I guess, that it's... Yeah, thinner profile. Yeah, a thinner that is profile nice. of it. Yeah. Because of my bigger base, it's going to be bigger the whole way up. Right. Yeah. And you got yours on a Suzette Steels. Do you remember your price? Because um, it retails $169. I think they're normally like, I think it was like a 25% off. Wow. 
So then you had a big chunk off because mine was one ninety five and I didn't have a yeah. sale. Um, so yeah, and it was a, so yeah, and also that was a good price too, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was. And when I yeah. bought mine, this didn't even exist. Mm -hmm. So the question is, if I knew both of them existed, mm -hmm. which one would you do? <laughs> and I, I'll if you want, I would love to try yours for a while, yeah. and you're welcome to try mine. Yeah. Don't put <laughs> any artichoke it. dip inside the dope. We don't travel with artichoke dip in the okay. pocket anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I still think I would pick mine because of the pocket and yeah. because of the base. And mm -hmm. as much as I love that color, I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. So this isn't even helpful. <laughs> on Instagram, feel free to follow me on Instagram. I have posts, like, maybe three photos a week of just my bags in action and doing different things. And I was like, it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> neck to neck. Move <laughs> on, neck to neck. We're like, nope, mine won. <laughs> Okay, so if there's anything else, we are going to model these for you. Both of us will. Um, we're similar heights, different body types. It's all good. And then I'll share my stories about Whip and Post at the way end. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. All right. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm back again. Here's the Love 41 symbol tote. And I am 5'5", five five, so you can see how it fits. There's from the front. Back to the side. Mm -hmm. So, and you can see the drop. That's a good amount of space in here. So, and then if I put it in my the crook, it hangs a little lower, so it's not it's with the longer drop, but it's still all right. And then here is the whipping toast. Whipping post. <laughs> Ears in the crook. <laughs> and then up on the shoulder. Still a good amount of room. Mm hmm. And then from the front. Okay, now I'll do it. <laughs> Did you call it whipping toast? <laughs> Alright, uh, here I'm 5'5, five five, but just a little bit different in size. So this is my crook of my arm. Up on my. Shoulder. I always want to say soldier. My shoulder. Okay. It's a little bit different, but definitely the the shul the the shoulder drop is very yeah. different. Yeah. I wonder if you're stretched. Okay. Here's the crook. Oh, that is so different. Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice because your thumb kind of rests yeah. differently. Put your hand Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, thanks guys, see you later. Hi again. This part of the video I wanted to share more of what has happened with my whipping post toe in the last two years of owning it. How I got the center strap on it and um, just things to look out for when you have a tote and what to do and what not to do. Um, thank you again Annie for being a part of this video. I just sent her and her children home. It was a lot of fun. I got to meet my dog, and I'm really grateful that she was able to just set aside some time to help me with that part of the video. And uh, be sure to leave any questions you have for her or myself in the comments below. So, my whipping post tote came to me, um, not came to me, I purchased this two years ago because um, totes were just kind of starting to become kind of popular and I considered it for my lifestyle and I was like let's give it a, tr a try. I bought it the same time I bought my large hobo from Saddleback Leather. That's still in my collection. Those are the two longest lasting bags in my whole collection. And um, I'm really, I was buying both at the same time and then I was like I'm going to pick one or the other and I ended up keeping both. I was grateful to be able to financially handle that but um, I don't regret either purchase and excuse me. I want to tell you some stories about this bag because it's been through a lot. Um, the main issue that came up was I wanted to add a center strap so that it could close. I brought this bag on a plane once and they said, ma'am, put it above your head and I was so concerned things would fall out. So what I ended up doing was taking a scarf or blanket that I had and kind of it being the last thing in the bag and just tucked everything underneath and then the scarf kind of just tucking everything on top. It ended up being fine in the airplane, but I was like, no, I should get a center strap. So I looked on Yelp 
for a um, leather craftsman in St. Louis area. And I found this man and I emailed him and he was like, come on over, let's look at your project. He was so sweet and kind. Um, I believe he was in his 80s. He was a retired leatherman and he was a part of a lot of trade shows and he was showing me his belts and his purses. And it was such a cute experience because it was like, he had this cute little house and his wife was watching TV upstairs and we were working in his basement and they were really warm and friendly. But, um... <clears throat> We started working on the project and I explained the whole thing and he's like, oh, it only cost about $20. I was like, wow, that's amazing. He got a strip of leather. He punched the holes where I wanted them. He shaped the, the end of the strap the way I wanted. He stained it the color I wanted. I mean, all around, a beautiful story. So then we got to the point where he needed to attach the strap to the bag. And so Whipping Post uses copper rivets. Actually, I'll be right back. Okay. Today's crazy. I have another friend stopping over. She's my mentor. And I wanted to get her set up and making some tea. And I'm going to finish this. And then go hang out with her. A very fun day for me. Um, I don't remember where I was. But this old man was so charming. And he was going above and beyond my expectations of what I wanted. And we were staining the strap. And when it got to the point where we were deciding how to attach the strap the bag, Whipping Post used these copper rivets. And um, I wanted copper rivets for my strap and he didn't have any and he had some brass, mm, antique brass rivets. And they didn't seem to be super, super durable, but he's like, no, they'll work, they'll be fine. He attaches them and um, I can't recall if that's when the problems ha happened. No, I don't say it didn't, okay. So he attaches them, $20, total project, but a day later, they fell out. So I emailed him, said, hey, you know, this happened, let's look at it again. So with the same strap, same holes, he, um, this is where he actually went through this pocket with holes. And in, in um, hindsight, we should have just gone behind the pocket and gotten the holes attached back here. So if you're going to do this yourself, don't have it go through the pocket, have it go through just the outside of the bag. Um, so we're going to attach it again, and this is where I realized his eyesight isn't the best. And bless his heart, he had his rubber mallet, and he had my bag propped up on his work table, and he starts hitting and hitting and hitting, and he's not hitting my bag, and he's hitting other things. And if you know anything about, well, I don't even know what you need to know about, but he was hitting the brass rivets and the heat of the, the hitting was adding up and it was flattening the rivet in such a way that it looked horrible. I actually think he went out and bought copper rivets for me. He was such a sweetheart like that. He bought copper rivets for me, but he was hitting it so hard that it was like melting and smushing. Copper rivets, isn't this a boring story, but copper rivets are like a rod and a washer. And then there's tension when the washer goes over the rod. And then you cut off the rod and you hammer it down nicely so it's not sharp. He smushed it to like a pancake so that the tension in the leather in between didn't matter. He just made a huge hole. So let's look at that huge hole. <laughs> um, he, can I show you? There's this huge gaping hole, if you see right in here, right in there is a huge hole and all these extra beading marks, whether it's like kicked up and tufted right here, I'll even get closer. Do you see this? This is why I'll never sell this bag because I'm not going to give anyone this burden. And see, this is why you shouldn't go through the pocket, you should just go through the back of the pocket. That's where you should go, right here, instead of right here. Okay, <clears throat> so now I'm sitting there like, my $200 bag is is, is suffering. And um, you can kind of see this battle scar right here in that light. Because of how he was laying the bag on his workbench, it had bent from all the mallet hitting, and now there's this permanent bulge, this weird like 
moment right here. <clears throat> and I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, I don't have many options. I'm going to stay calm, thank him for his time, and get out of there. I go back to Yelp and I look for a leather man, a different one. And the one I had seen before but was too expensive, um... Yeah, he was, I'm looking at my notes. He was too expensive, that's why I didn't choose him. I went and said, can you do this project for me? But I need you to make a strap as well. He goes, to do a strap and all the holes and add those copper rivets, it's going to be $100. I'm like, but my bag only costs $200. I'm not going to spend $100 on this. And he goes, I can't help you. So I come home and I'm all frustrated. And those are the perfect times for you just to think of solutions because you're so frustrated. You're like, I have to make this work. So I went on the buy sell group on Facebook for Saddleback Leather. Again, all this information will be in the below this video. And I said, guys, I know that a lot of people have scraps from Saddleback Leather. You can buy scraps from them. I need a dark coffee brown um, piece of scrap that will be about this long, you know, 13 inches or so <clears throat> for a project I'm working on. And Blake, hi Blake, I don't know if you're still around. Blake was so generous that he actually just shipped me the sample for free of the leather and um, from there I measured out what I wanted. I bought a hole punch for leather at Hobby Lobby. I made the holes where I wanted them to go. There's holes right here. I did the edges the way I wanted. You see all the holes? <clears throat> I made the two holes for where the bag would attach to the um, actual tote and I made the hole over here for a nipple rivet. I think maybe the old man did this for me. It's just a it's a Chicago screw nipple rivet and um, you can actually take it on and off but this is what the strap attaches to. Okay so I go back to the, the very expensive leather guy and I said listen I did all this leg work can you please help me? And he goes uh, I guess um, it'll be $15. And I'm like, fine. All he's doing is putting on two copper rivets, trimming them down, and that's it. So he does this for me relatively quickly. I wait in my car. I come back in, and he did a really good job on the copper rivets. I'll zoom in on that. So this is whipping post copper rivets right here, and this is the other leather guy. See, not bad. You can really mess this part up with the copper rivets because you can smash it too hard. You need to have like a little bit of, um, a, it's sticking out a little bit right there. So I said, um, great, thank you so much. I'm so excited you did great. And he's like, oh, $25. I go, no, no, you quoted 15. And he goes, I've dealt with you before. I want 25. I'm like, but that's not what you asked for. And he goes, ma'am, this project is just taking too much of my time. I want 25. I was like, okay. So I gave him $25 and I got in my car and wrote him a very mean Yelp review. His work was good and I made sure to write that in the Yelp review. Great quality work, really good timeline, but his, his personality was very hard to deal with and he was very rude to me. Um, funny enough, Two, two years later, that store is now closed, and he is not in business anymore. I don't know if it had to do with his pleasantness, but his work was very good. Okay, so that was the main story of how I got the strap, and I like to tuck the strap sometimes back into the pocket behind it, like so. Um, but I ne end up closing it the most when I'm on a trip, and I'm just it's just brimming full of things. But that extra pinch really kind of helps seal things a little bit more. But normal day to day, everything's just in the bottom of the bag. Um, okay, and then the other story I had, and the one that you can learn from, is never have really heavy weighted things in here that are lopsided or for more than a day. My girlfriend um, in the city, one of my best friends, she wanted me to install some floating shelves. I'm handy like that, so I grabbed my drill and my toolbox, and <laughs> that sounds so funny, and I grabbed my bag, and I put everything in there, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell this one. I left my drill in here, like, for the rest of the week in my car, 
and the bulge of that weight and the just lopsidedness actually made my bag let's get this out of here what's all this stuff okay let's see if you can actually see this this story might be hard to share over on this side of the bag it is super bulgy because of the pocket because of that weight from the drill but it's like all this extra material right here that's not over on this side because I had it stretched with a weight so leather stretches and it stretches over time so if you're ever putting something in here that's awkward or lopsided or really heavy like a dumbbell would do the same thing or a heavy water bottle it's going to just bulge and be a per permanent bulge so I do sell a lot of bags on eBay and on Facebook and I sell my bags in the best quality that I have received them there's barely any wear and tear no smoke no perfume no stains so obviously I can never sell this one and nor do I want to but it's um, because it's so beat up it's almost gotten more love because it goes through everything with me because I'm not concerned about anyone else I guess I'm not concerned about selling it. I'm not concerned about it actually getting broken. It's been through a lot and it keeps on going. So that's my little story. And um, if you do decide to get your own strap, um, check out those scrap bags that Saddleback sells for $25. You get, um, I think, five pounds of scrap. You might get a lot of crap. You might get something that you can make a strap out of. Um, for the whipping post, I would suggest the chestnut color. I ended up getting the dark coffee brown, but you can see this is a little more red than brown. From far away, you know, it reads the same. But I would prefer the chestnut strap over the dark coffee brown that I got. And look, see, I like cut it similar. The copper lines aren't set up because they those holes were already taken by the old man, and um, I had to find new holes. All right. I think we're done. This is going to be probably my longest video. You've been warned, and I don't care if you think it's too long. I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, have a good week.